morning, guys. Today we are going to get into our second lesson, okay? So watch this video real quick on rounding, okay? So today's objective is rounding. So go ahead and open up your composition book, please, your math composition book. And we are going to be on page two. So go ahead and write the number two here because that is page two. And we're going to be rounding. Okay, so what is rounding? Well, just to refresh your memory, what rounding is, here it is. Write a number as an approximation by replacing it with the nearest significant figure. Usually that one can be divided by 10, okay, to make it easier to work with. And then it gives you an example there, okay? So we're going to be rounding today. I'm gonna to show you the steps on how to do it, and then we'll do some examples, okay? So let's go ahead and go to page two. So there's my page one. So now we're here because there's the tried outs. So now we are on a nice clean front page for rounding. So if you remember from yesterday, okay, page two comes up here and then the objective goes on the top. So we're gonna write rounding, okay? I love colors. You're going to see your notebook is going to be very colorful. If you just like to use two, three different colors, that's fine. Red and black is fine. Uh, red, black, and blue, that's usually the, the colors I see most. So that's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. So let's get into rounding. So we're going to take an example. We're going to use an example to show you the steps of rounding. Okay. So we are going to, right here at the top, we are going to round... 458 to the nearest 100. Okay, so we're going to the nearest 100. And there's a few steps that you have to make sure that you do follow, okay? So we're gonna write those steps down. So step one, step one. We are going to underline the digit in the rounding place. So whatever they tell me to round, that's the digit we're going to be underlining, okay? So step one again, we are going to underline the digit in the rounding place. And make sure when you are writing your notes, you're writing nice, you know, fairly neatly, okay? That way they are legible and everything fits on the paper. This is this is your book, okay? All right. So for that example, remember, we're taking 458 and we're rounding it to the nearest 100. So when I say underline the rounding place, they want you to um, take a look at the 100 place. So the 8 is the 1s, the 5 is the 10s, the 4 is the 100. So that's the one that we are going to underline. So I'm going to underline the four. That is step one. Okay. Step two. Ooh, sorry. We are going to circle the digit to the right. Okay, and if you forgot your left from your right, right goes that way, <laughs> okay? Excuse the noise, okay? Sorry, somebody's um, getting their room ready for y'all. So we're gonna circle the digit to the right. So we're taking the same number, 458. Remember, step one again was to underline the hundreds place. Step two, we're gonna go to the right digit, that five, and we're gonna circle it. And he's the one that's in charge. He's the one that's gonna tell us what to do okay so that brings us to step number three so step three we have two options here a lot of teachers at the elementary i've heard a lot of students tell me that they remember their teacher saying um five or more add one more four or less let it rest that's pretty much the go-to saying okay that's what you do here okay so if the circle digit is, so let's write that down, if the circled 
digit is, okay, remember two options, okay, if the circle digit is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, we let it rest. In other words, we leave the underlying digit alone. We leave it alone. It's not going to change. We're not going to add one. We're not, it's not going to go down by one. It stays the same. Okay. So we can say here, um, underlined digit remains the same. So again, if the digit you circled is a zero, a one, two, three, or four, the underlying digit remains the same, okay? It just stays, in this case, it would just stay a four if that was the case, okay? But if the circle digit is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, five or more, we add one more. We're gonna add one more uh, to the digit that's underlined, okay? It's going to go up by one. So we're going to say um, add one to the, oops, to the underlined digit, okay? Add one to the underlined digit. So going back to our example, we have 458. Step one was that we underlined the digit in the hundreds place because that's the one we are um, working with, but to be rounded. Circle the digit to the right, which was the five. Now we take a look, okay? The circle digit is a five. Here's my five. It says to add one to the underlined digit. So I'm going to add one to that underlined digit of four. So what is four plus one? Five. So the four will change to a five, which looks like this now. We'll have a five, and we're gonna leave these two digits. I have one blank for each digit, okay? Because something's gonna happen to those digits after that one that we underlined, okay? And that comes to step four. A lot of people forget about step four. It is very important, okay? So on step four, where am I? There I am. Step four, we are going to change each digit to the right of the underlined to zero, okay, zero, okay? So everything after that underlined digit changes into a zero, okay? So that five changes to a zero, the eight changes to a zero, okay? So gotta make sure we account for everybody there. So our final answer here, rounding 458 to the nearest 100, I underlined the digit in the place value of the 100, circled the digit to the right, found out that this five is gonna make me add one to the four, okay? So the four changes to a five, and those empty um, digits after that, the five changes to a zero, and the eight changes to a zero. So 458 round to the nearest 100 is 500, okay? And that is how you round. And like I was saying on the last one, on the last uh, notes from yesterday, a lot of your answers and questions now are gonna be round your answer to the nearest tenth to the nearest hundred, okay? So make sure you get that down, okay? Now we're gonna get into some examples. Move that out of the way. We'll do a couple of examples and uh, you're going to do your try it outs on the back, okay? So, um, our first example I want us to round 843 and 113 thousandths to the 
hundred, oh, hundredths. It's not me unless I make a mistake. <laughs> to the hundredths, okay? And guys, mistakes is fine. It happens all the time. We're only human, okay? We learn from them. Now I know I should learn how to spell hundredths, okay? <laughs> Forget the D. All right, so we're gonna change this and there's hundredths. So we're gonna follow the steps. This is how you use your notes. You follow the steps, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite my number so you can see it here. We have 843 and 113 thousandths. Step one was to underline the digit in the rounding place. We are rounding the hundredths. So let's look for the hundredths. Here's my decimal. That's the tenths, here's the hundredths. Step one is to underline the hundredths place because that's what we want, okay? Step two. Circle the digit to the right, okay? So here's my underlined digit. I'm gonna go to the right, his neighbor there, and circle him because he holds all the power. He's gonna tell me what to do, okay? So there's the three. Step three, if the circle digit, so I'm looking inside the circle, okay? I see a number three. Uh, there's my three right there. It tells me underlined digit remains the same. So he stays, a one. Everything before him, before him stays the same. So I'm bringing everything else down. Okay, just like that. And the last step, change each digit to the right of the underline to a zero. So this three, if I have a spot there, is a zero. Okay, so 843 and 113 thousands to the nearest hundred is 843 and 11 hundredths, okay? Now you can write it two ways. You can write your answer like this, or the simplified version is 843 thousandths and 11 tenths, because this is 100, this is 110 hundredths, 110 thousandths, here's 11 hundredths, okay? So either one of these will work. I prefer this one, because that zero at the end, I don't need it. It's not needed, okay? So um, just take it off. Okay, doing good? All right, you're doing okay. Remember always pause it if you need to after I explain, a lot of people like to hear it and then write it. So watch the example, press pause, write the example. Hear the example, watch the example, pause, and then write it. So you can do that as well, okay? Uh, let's try another one. Let's round one and 152 thousandths to the, uh, let's go to the tenths. Okay, to the tenths. So we're gonna follow the steps I already told you, okay? So we're, I'm gonna rewrite it out so you can see it all. And step one, if you remember step one, we are going to underline the digit in the rounding place. So the rounding place on this example is the actually the tenths now, okay? So here's my decimal, there is the tenths. Okay, if you need to remember your place value, go to your place value chart on page one that we did our notes from yesterday, okay? Now, that's step one, underline the digit we're rounding. Step two, circle the digit to the right. So go to his neighbor on the right. Okay, step three, let's bring that little chart back up so you can see it. Look at the digit that's circled. That is a five. Where is the five at? There it is. What does it tell you to do? Add one to the underlying digit, okay? So I'm going to add one to the one to the one, <laughs> okay? So this one changes into a two. And remember, everything before it stays the same, okay? What happens to the digits after it? That's step four. They turn into zeros, okay? So your answer here is one and two hundred thousandths. Is there a better way to write this, a simplified way of writing this? Of course there is, okay? One and two tenths. These are the exact same numbers. They hold the exact same value because those zeros really don't mean anything. They don't add anything to it, okay? So your answer would be one and two tenths here, okay?
Ready for another one? Okay. Now let's talk about, um, sometimes they don't give you a place value. So I wanna make sure you understand how to do that one. Okay, so example, let us round 16 and 72 hundredths to the nearest whole number. Okay, to the nearest whole number. You probably see something different. They don't tell you a place value like they did before in the hundreds, the tenths, or anything like that. They tell you just to round the nearest whole number. So the place value they're talking about when they say whole number is pretty much your ones place, okay? I wanna change the whole number. What's the first place value in a whole number? The ones, okay? So we are going to take 16 and 72 hundreds, and when they say whole number, they mean the ones place, that first digit um, before the decimal, okay? Then we follow step two, circle the digit to the right, okay? There's that seven. Go up here if you don't remember it. Remember, five or more, let it soar, four or less, let it rest. This is a seven. There is my seven right here, and it says add one to the underlying digit. So I'm going to add one to that six. So that six turns into a seven. Anything before that stays the same. And what happens to the digits after it? They are your zeros. So 16 and 72 hundredths around the nearest whole number is 17 and zero hundredths, okay? Is there a simplified version of saying this? Definitely. You can just say, Miss Munoz, the answer is just 17. 17 is correct, okay? So either one of those answers will be accepted on Google, but I prefer just the whole number, just put 17, okay? No need to put those zeros, all right? One more, let's talk about money, okay? Money, money, money. Let us round um, $15 and 63 cents to the nearest dollar. Okay, and I'm gonna rewrite it here. So I'm ready to work. Now, just like, <clears throat> just like before the other one, <clears throat> it doesn't give me a place value to um, actually round. So here they're talking about nearest dollar. Okay, so you have to remember money. The decimal separates the dollar amount from the cents. Okay, your quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. So when they say nearest dollar, they want the ones place, okay? Because that is your first dollar, all right? So that's the number we're gonna be using to, to round. So now we do step two. You got that, circle to the right. That is a six in my circle. Here we go. Do you remember what the six makes you do? Find it if you don't know it yet, there's the six. Add one to the underlying digit. So I'm going to add one to the five, because that's the one I underlined, okay? So the five changes to a six. And what happens to those two digits after I rounded the five? They turn to zeros. So $15.63 rounded to the nearest dollar is $16, okay? Now you can write it like this, or all right, like that. As long as you have the dollar sign there, we're good. Okay? Any questions there? Well, if you do, just come to Google Meets, okay? <laughs> or email me, because I wish y'all were here so we can talk. But we'll be together soon, okay? Now it's time for you to try it out. So, see if you understand it. So here at the top, all right, try it out. Okay, 
And if you happen to have used the back for your notes, because maybe you didn't fit everything on it, that's fine. Just draw a line where you stopped and put try it out and do it there. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Now, your try it outs right up here. I'm going to give you four problems. I want you to pause the video once you see the problems and then go ahead and press play when you're ready to see if you got them right. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, hopefully you got them out. We're gonna go ahead and um, see if you got them correct. Okay, hopefully you did. All right, let's take a look at them, question number one. It says, round 241 and five hundredths to the nearest whole number. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. So nearest whole number, if you remember in your notes, tells you that we're looking at the ones place. Okay, look at the ones place. So that is the one, you should have underlined the one. Step two, circle the digit to the right. That is a zero. You look at your little chart, zero is less than five, so five or four or less, let it rest. So the one is gonna stay a one. Everything before that stays the same. Everything after that turns into zeros, okay? So you should have got 241 or just write 200. 41. Either one of those answers is acceptable by me. Okay. Hopefully I'll do good on that one. Number two, we are going to round 46 and 123 thousandths to the nearest hundredths. Okay. So it tells you right there, round to the nearest hundredth. Step one, underline the hundredth spot. That's hundredths is the two. Two, circle the digit to the right. That three tells you leave the digit alone. So everything before the two stays the same. Even the two stays the same because of that three. And that three turns into a zero. So you should have got 46 and 12 hundredths, okay? 46 and 12 hundredths, all right? Next one, we're going to round 15 and 4 tenths to the nearest tens place, not tenths, tens. So your tens place here is the one. Circle the digit to the right. That's a five. The five makes you add one to the one. So this takes one plus one is two. Everything after that turns into zeros, okay? So your answer for three should have been 20. Okay, now question four. Question four was there not to trick you, but to see if you remember what to do with this one. This one's a hard one. We're rounding two and 396 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. So 10th hundredth is the nine. Look at that six right there, okay? That six is telling you we're gonna go ahead and add one to the nine but something's gonna happen here. What is nine plus one? It is 10. You're not gonna put the number 10 in place of nine, okay? We're gonna treat like an addition problem. So if I do nine plus one, that's 10, but I need to carry the one over, okay? Carry the one over. And that'll give you three plus one is four. Everything before it stays the same, okay? The digit after the nine turned into a zero. So your answer is two and four tenths. How many got that one right? If you got that one right, awesome job. If you got it wrong, hopefully this reminds you what to do. I know that was a trick one, I'm so sorry, but I had to put it in there to see if you remember how to do that, okay? All right, that's the lesson for today. Um, go ahead and log into, well, you're already in your Google. Go ahead and get into the assignment number two, rounding. Go ahead and complete those 10 quick questions on rounding and submit it and you're done, okay? If you have questions, get onto your Google Meets at that certain time or go ahead and shoot me a quick email, okay? All right, guys, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a great day.